Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today we find ourselves in a world full of arrogance, a place where a farmer can become emperor, whereas the dwarf can be the highest. Every path of the explorer is not viable. The knight's shield will not protect you from the wizardry, and you won't be able to say who is the real oracle, as he might turn up disguised, and the assassin will appear suddenly when you're not expecting it. Megalomania is a trick-taking game for two to four players, where you're trying to complete missions and gain points with the help of power crystals, cubes, and scrolls. Now it takes 30 to 45 minutes to play, and is published by BG Era Games. Now today we'll be doing a rule school, where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now if you want to jump to a specific section of the rules, I place timestamps below me in the index that you can jump to. Without further ado, let's get started. <music> Megalomania is a trick-taking game for two to four players that has four different suits and eight different cards of each suit, ranging in very specific numbers from 1 to 15. The game's 12 rounds long, and each round there'll be a different mission which will tell you how you score. Like, you'll lose four points if you take exactly two tricks. It uses standard trick-taking elements for the basics of the game, like having to follow the lead suit, and the highest of those would win the trick. And if you don't have that suit, you'll be forced to play the dominant color, which possibly will easily allow you to win the trick. But playing power crystals on your cards allow you to use its special ability, like canceling the dominant color for that round or making the lowest value win the trick, or forcing others to play their lowest value, or changing colors, and many more. Or you can play cubes, and for each one you do, it will manipulate the number up or down one for each of the cubes, and you might have a powerful scroll to be able to play to do certain things like choosing the dominant color, or increasing or decreasing the number of tricks taken by one. So let's see if you have what it takes to use the resources in the best way, and play the right hands to have the most points at the end of the 12 rounds. To set up, first you're going to find the mission cards. Now you're going to go through these cards and you're going to remove certain cards depending on the number of players. In the bottom left of each of these cards, it'll show you the amount of players, two, three, or four. If it has a red square, that means that this card cannot be played with that player count. So this cannot be played with two players, but three and four green, meaning this card can be played with three or four players. So for example, if we were playing a three player game like we are here, we would include this card. However, if we had this card, which is red for three players, we would remove it. So remove all the cards that are not for your player count, then shuffle up this mission deck and place it off to the side. Next, find the scroll deck, shuffle these, and place them off to the side. Now these are the main cards you'll be playing with in the game. Shuffle this deck up and also place it off to the side for now. Also, create a supply of the power crystals and the cubes off to the side. The object of the game is to have the most points in the end. The game lasts 12 rounds, and you're gonna be scoring points during the different rounds, and you'll just add them all up at the end of the 12th round, whoever has the most points is the winner. At the beginning of each round, you will flip over the top card of the mission deck, and this is gonna tell you what this round's about and how you might score. This card has a red back, which means you don't want to do this. You don't want to take exactly two tricks, because if you do, you'll lose four points, hence the red card. Now it also will tell you how many cards that you're going to deal to each player. In this case, it shows us seven here. So in that case, you would take this deck of cards and you would deal seven to each player face down. You could pick up your cards and look at them, but don't show them to anyone else. Now the person who dealt those cards in round one is the one who has the closest birthday. They're the dealer. They also will say which is the dominant color for this round. So round one, they're going to say the dominant color is black. Then you're going to go to the selection of resources. Now each player, starting with the player to the left of the dealer, gets to choose, and that's the order you go, start from the player to the left of the dealer, and then go clockwise. Each player has four choices. They can either take two power crystals, ten cubes, one power crystal and five cubes, or one of the scroll cards. Now we're going to go over how these work a little bit later, but generally speaking, the power crystal is going to allow you to use abilities on cards, the cubes are going to allow you to manipulate the actual value of the cards you play, and scrolls are going to give you some different advantages to help you try to make points. So if you're watching this video as you're playing for the first time, just know that you're going to select this before each round, but for now, since you don't really know the strategy yet, go ahead and watch the rest of the video, and then come back after you've seen the rest of it and decide which one you'll pick. 
So now, starting with that player that's to the left of the dealer, they're going to play the first card into a trick, and the trick is just essentially a round of card play. And so they're going to lead by playing any card that they want from their hand face up. Then the next player clockwise must play a card from this suit if possible. So let's say they play the number one, the farmer. Now the next player also, if they can, must play a card from the lead suit. And let's say they played the number six. Now, since everyone has played the lead suit, whoever has played the highest number is going to win this trick. They'll take all of these cards and they'll collect them and put it face down in front of them. And you want to put them in piles, meaning if you win the trick next round, you'd want to put those cards as a separate trick that you took because now you know that you've taken two tricks. And this is very important because many of the missions have to do with how many tricks you take. Then the player that won that trick plays and starts the next trick. So let's say this player starts off with a two of blue. Again, if the next player has blue, they must play it. So let's say they play a seven of blue. And again, this player must play blue if they have it. But let's say they didn't have blue. If you don't have the color that was lead, then you must play the dominant color. For this round, it was black, so they must play a black card. Now, in this case, we have the lead suit, and they followed the lead suit because they had to, and they did, and they did not have the lead suit, so they played the dominant suit. The dominant suit, the highest card of the dominant suit, is going to win the trick. So in this case, this player is going to win the trick, take the cards, put them in front of them, and lead the next trick. But remember, they couldn't play this if they had any blue cards because that was the lead suit. However, if that second player also didn't have blue, but they had a black, they must play a black because that's the dominant suit. So they played that. This player didn't have blue, but they did have the dominant suit. They played that. Again, at the end of the trick, if there is the dominant suit was played, then the highest card of that suit will win. So in this case, this player would win the trick. However, let's say this player led with a blue too. This player needs to follow suit if they could. They didn't have any blue. If you don't have that suit, you must play from the dominant suit. And in this case, it was black. Let's say they didn't have any black either. At that point, if you don't have the lead suit and you don't have any of the dominant suit, you can play any card. So in this case, they just played red. Now here, this player did not have blue, so they must play the dominant suit, and they did, which is black. Now again, if there's ever a trick that has at least one dominant suit, the highest number of that dominant suit would win. So in this case, this one would win. However, let's say it looked like this. This player led with a blue. This player has to play blue. They didn't have one. If next, they have to play a black dominant suit. They didn't have that either, so they played this. This player didn't have a blue or a black, so they could play any card, but they played this. In this case, there's no dominant suit, so it's going to be the highest number of the lead suit. So this blue two beats these two, because these aren't the lead suit, and they're not the dominant suit. So this one would win this trick. Always the player that won the trick starting the next trick. Now you'll continue this until... Players don't have any cards left in their hand for this round, and then you'll look at the mission and see who scores what. In this case, is if you took two tricks exactly, you'd lose four points. Otherwise, you'd get nothing, and that's this specific mission. At the end of the round, you tally the scores on the score sheet based upon the mission. You'll shuffle up all the cards that were together, both the ones that weren't dealt and the ones that were played, and then you're going to deal a new hand. Now, the new dealer is the one that was sitting to the left of the dealer from last round. And just like before, they're going to take a new mission card and place it here. Now, there are different types of things that might happen in missions. Like, for example, this one tells us that we're going to deal six cards up. But it also has a special rule shown by here, but it also says it here. After each turn, which means after each trick, you take all the cards in your hand and you give them to the player sitting to your right. So the cards will be moving around after every single trick in this. And whoever takes the most tricks, meaning more than everyone else, will get four points. And if there's multiple players tied have taken the most tricks, then they all get the four points. Sometimes missions might have points that are variable depending on the mission. Like in this case, you deal out eight cards to each player. And every time you take a blue card at the end, it's going to be worth a point. So depending on how many blue cards you have taken in all your tricks, you get a certain amount of points. Also notice that this specific mission is only available in a four player game. And if you have specific questions about mission numbers, you can look at starting on page 16 of the rule book. It tells you all the specifics of each of the missions and each of these numbers correspond with the number in the bottom right of the mission. Now that's the very basics of the game. So let's dive into the power crystals, the cubes, and the scrolls. Remember, at the beginning of the round, after the mission has been selected and the cards have been dealt out, each player, starting with the left of the player to the dealer, they're going to select one of these four options, two power crystals, 
10 cubes, one power crystal and five cubes, or a scroll. Now I've just placed this out here to easily show you what these options are, but each player can choose any of the options, meaning they could all choose the same option if they wanted to. So let's first talk about those cubes. Let's say this player led with a blue four. This player has to play blue if they can, and they did. Now this player has to play blue if they can, and they did. However, if you have cubes from your resource selection, you can spend as many of them as you like, but you can only spend them on your own card, and each of them will either add or subtract values to your card. This player has a two, let's add three cubes, it's now a five. Because the five is the highest number and everything was the lead suit, this player would now win. This trick and take all the cards and collect them as normal. These cubes would get discarded back to the supply. And you can play as many cubes as you want as long as you still have some. So you might be thinking, why would someone subtract the value? Well, we just saw our, that earlier mission. Maybe somebody didn't want to win the trick because they didn't want to win exactly two tricks. However, let's say this first player played the four blue as before. This player had a follow blue if they could and they did. They put a one, but they put four cubes and now they're winning five to four. By the way, you must play the cubes pretty much immediately as you play the card. So now this player plays and they also plays four cubes, meaning they are two plus four is six, one plus four is five. This player would win because if you tie, it's the number that was played first would win. So in this, if they only put three cubes, they tie this one, this player would win because they have played before them. So they would need to play this many cubes in order to win this trick. So let's talk about the power crystals. When you play a card, at the time you play it, you can place a power crystal on it if you want to, and you will enact the ability on that card. And these cards all have sort of different abilities depending on the number slash uh, name. This is the farmer. This one says, choose who leads the next turn. So they'll place this here, they'll put this here. This doesn't change this specific trick. So the other players would do the same thing. So maybe they say, they go like this, and they say, okay, well, we had the four, we had the one, we did two, three, four, five. This player would still win. Normally, this player is going to collect all the, uh, all the tricks, and they're then going to lead. But because this ability was enacted, this person gets to choose who leads the next turn. So this winner would still collect all the cards, just a trick in front of them, but the player that played this would decide who led the next trick. Now, for the farmer, only one player can place a power cube on a farmer per trick. Now let's look at the assassin's ability. Let's say this player led, they led yellow, and let's say the dominant suit for this round is blue. This player would normally have to play yellow, but if they play an assassin and immediately place a power crystal on it, they could play on any color. Meaning, even if they had a yellow and they normally would have to play it, they could play this blue assassin with a power crystal that allows them to break that rule and play it. This player had yellow, so they had to play it. Because blue is a dominant suit, this player is now going to win that trick. Now let's say this player led with a 12 of yellow, and let's say blue is still the dominant suit. This player plays the four of yellow because they followed suit, and they play a power crystal. This allows them to discover a card. And that card is randomly one of the cards that was won in the last trick. So you take the last trick and you randomly take one of these cards, and they can decide to keep the card in their hand. And if so, they would replace it with one of the other cards in their hand. So essentially you're keeping the same amount of cards, but you're possibly doing it. If you didn't like the card you took, you could put it back face down in that trick. And then the round finishes as normal. Let's just say it was like this. So this player would win the trick. Now let's talk about the dwarf. Let's say the lead player played this 12 of yellow. This player had no yellow, so they played blue, which in this case, let's say is the dominant suit. So right now between these two cards, this one's winning. This player plays the dwarf and they add a power crystal. This allows the lowest value takes the trick. So if there's a dominant suit out there, the lowest value would take it. In this case, six is lower than nine. So this player would take the trick. If all players followed suit and this player played this, they're still the lowest. There's no dominant suit. They're all lead suits. So this player would still win the trick. Now, if this were the case, if this player placed this, it'd be the lowest one would win the suit from the dominant suit, which is blue. So this player would actually win it. So they probably wouldn't play that, of course, unless they were going to win a trick and they didn't want to win it for some reason for a mission. Now we're going to talk about the wizard's power. Let's say this player led with a yellow four. This player followed suit because they had to, and they played a seven wizard, but they played a power crystal, which says everyone after that must play their lowest card of the lead suit. So in this case, they played the two. That was their lowest yellow. So in this case, they're all the lead suit. So this person would win the trick. However, that could backfire because if they don't have the lead suit, they have to play the lowest of the dominant suit. And so they might actually help this player win. Let's say the dominant suit was blue. They would play their lowest blue and they would now win. And if the players after them, let's say this one had 
did not have the lead suit and they didn't have the dominant suit. They played the lowest of any of the suits in this case like that. And now this player would win. Keep in mind that when the wizard, it's all players after that would have to play the lowest card following those rules. And only one wizard can have a power uh, uh, crystal on it each turn. Now let's talk about the knight. Let's say this player led with a yellow four. This player had to follow suit if they could. They played a nine, but they added a power crystal. And this disables the dominant color for every player played after the knight. So in this case, this player knew that this player did not have yellow, but they played blue, which let's just say is the dominant suit. Now, normally, if this player didn't play the crystal, this one win because it's the highest of the dominant suit because they couldn't play yellow, but they did play the dominant. But here, everyone after it disables the dominant color, which means all cards after that, if they play the dominant suit, loses the dominance of that. So in this case, this player would win it. However, if this player led and then this player didn't have yellow, so they play the dominant, this power crystal enacting the knight disables only the dominant colors afterwards. It wouldn't do this, so this player would still win that. And because of this ability, only one knight can have a power crystal per trick. Now let's talk about the oracle. This player led with a yellow four. This player followed suit because they had to. They played an oracle. Now let's say they didn't want to win this trick for whatever reason. If they play a power crystal, it changes the color of this oracle. Now you can never change it into the dominant suit. For example, let's say the dominant suit was blue. They couldn't change this into a blue oracle. However, let's say the dominant suit was yellow. You can turn it outside of the dominant suit. So let's say they just say, this is a red oracle. So now this player plays yellow because they follow suit because they have to and they could. So this player would now win. Now let's talk about the last ability, the emperor. Let's say this player leads with a four of yellow and they use a power crystal and they did discovering the card, possibly exchanging a card from the previous trick as mentioned earlier. And this player plays the emperor, follow suit because they have to, and they play a power crystal. This is disable unique powers. This means all players after this cannot play any power crystals this trick. And in this case, they all followed suit, so this one would win. Now remember, before each round, each player is selecting one of these four options. We've talked about the power crystals and the cubes. By the way, if you have any power crystals or cubes left over at the end of the round, meaning all the tricks have been played, you must return any leftover back to the supply. You cannot carry any of these over to the next round. So let's talk about the last possible option, these scrolls. Now when selecting a scroll, you'll just take the top one and you'll keep it secret. This is an ability that you might be able to use in a future round. You can never use it in the round. You took it. So let's say you took a scroll. Now, next round, the beginning of the next round, after the cards are dealt, but before anyone selects the resource selection, the player that's going to be the lead, the one to the left of the dealer, has the first option to play any scroll card they have, if they have one. If not, it goes to the next player clockwise and so on and so forth, because only one scroll can be played per round. So if we have this from a previous round and we decide to play it, no one else had played one yet, we could play it like this. And this says, hey, I would get to choose the dominant color for that round. Or maybe it might be something like get as many power crystals and cubes as your opponents in total. Or maybe it might be something like increase or decrease the number of tricks taken by one. Now remember, you're only able to play one of these and only one player can play it per round and it's right before players select the resources. If you have any specific questions about these, we look at the number on the scroll. And beginning on page 20, you can read all the specifics for each card. So you continue playing the game in this fashion until the 12th round's over. At the end of the 12th round, players with at least one unused scroll gain two additional points, and whoever has the most points is the winner. Now, if players are tied, the, the winner is the player who earned the fewest negative points. And if the negative points are equal, then the winner is the player who has no unused scrolls. Now the game can also be played in pairs. Now there's no different rules when playing in pairs. The winner is the pair that earns the most points at the end of the game. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into megalomania faster than you normally would if you had to read the rule book yourself. If you have further questions about the rules, I've placed a link below me right in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them since I'll be notified, but so will BG Era Games.